I honestly wish there was a video like this when I started hunting. I'm gonna go over everything that you need and some things that kinda need but you can get away with along with the pricing of all that. And we are at Bass Pro Shops today. There's a very high chance that wherever you are in the country, you have a Bass Pro Shop. We're gonna go over everything. And now the main focus is gonna be for whitetail hunting because that is what is most popular. There would be some gear changes if you are hunting out west and you're gonna be backpacking and stuff. But this is just a general hunting video. Let's not waste any more time. Let's hop on inside. This is all under the assumption that you've already completed your hunter safety course and got your license for whatever state you are hunting in. But you cannot hunt, I don't care what gear you have, if you do not have a firearm of choice. So we have archery, you have your rifles, muzzle loader, shotguns. We're just gonna go over the basics. We're gonna talk bows, we're gonna talk rifles. First, we're gonna start off with archery. Now, in my opinion, the barrier to entry is a little bit higher. Archery is a little bit more expensive. It also is gonna take a lot of practice on your own. But the advantage is that you get to go hunting before all the rifle guys. So the best part of a Bass Pro Shop is they offer a ton of entry level options that already come with all your accessories. You got your sight, your rest, and your stabilizer. Every state requires a minimum draw weight. I know a lot of states it's like 35 pounds. You know, for some smaller people or any kids watching this, like that might be a lot of weight for you. The one thing that I would look for in a bow is getting a bow that has a broad adjustability and draw weight. That way you can grow into the bow. As you get stronger, you get more comfortable and you can draw more weight. There's a lot of things in the archery world that you can get away without having and you don't have to break the bank. So you got your bow. Any of these combos would work. Come to Bass Pro, figure out which one you like the best, have them set it up for you. Next, you're gonna need some arrows. They can also guide you on that. That's one of the best parts about coming to Bass Pro is that they are gonna have an archery technician here that can kind of guide you and set you up. And I'm not sponsored by Bass Pro, by the way. I'm just trying to let you guys know that this is a great option for getting into hunting. Now you're gonna need a release. That's what goes onto the bow, allows you to shoot the bow and arrow. And then lastly, is picking a broadhead of choice. I would recommend if you are just getting into hunting to shoot a mechanical. My go-to is the Grim Reaper. There's other good ones, Blood Sports, Muzzy makes some good ones but shoot a mechanical rather than a fixed blade. This will allow a lot more forgiveness and also your bow doesn't have to be as tuned to shoot them accurately. If I was picking a bow for me just starting, this is what I'd go with. This is the bear species. Now, for someone else, this may not work depending on your draw weight. This goes from 45 pounds up to 70 pounds. So all within my range that I can comfortably shoot. This right here is the game changer. You already get your arrows, you get your release, and they have some practice broadhead tips here. But this bow has everything. If there's one thing that I can tell you about archery is do not get caught up on what other people do. It is very personalized, far more personalized than rifle hunting or anything else. Your bow will be set up exactly for you, to your face height, your draw length, all that stuff. So if you went and let a buddy shoot it, he's not gonna shoot it as good. With that being said is a lot of people do things that they like, which will take time with you getting an archery to figure out what it is that you really like and what's your style and what is comfortable for you. But this setup right here has your release, it has your arrows, quiver, it's got a stabilizer on it, sight, rest, $500. Can't really beat this. This includes everything that you're gonna need and you don't even have to buy anything extra. All you gotta do is go get some broadheads. For something a little bit more budget friendly after looking around, this would probably be the option that I'd go with. This PSC Uprising is $300 and it goes up to 70 pounds. This bow goes up heavy enough that you could ethically kill anything in the United States. It still has some of your same accessories it's not gonna be as good as one of these other options. And if it was me, spend a little bit more money. This is not something where you're trying to look for the cheapest option possible. And if you're gonna go the archery route, you need to buy a target. You need to practice shooting your bow. Even if you're good, at shooting this, it's a totally different world when you're trying to shoot dinner. If you do want to spend a little bit more money and you want a little bit more realistic practice, I would recommend getting a 3D archery target. They make them in all different sizes. You can go all the way up to spending $300 or you can just spend $100. The other advantage of a lot of these is that you are able to shoot broadheads into them, not just field points. So you can practice with what you're gonna hunt with. In broadheads, there's a million options on the market. If I could pick one, I would recommend it's any of these Grim Reapers. They fly great and they do a ton of damage. All the animals that you guys have seen me go hunting for, this is what did the damage. Now they are a little bit pricier. Four of them for 50 bucks is a little bit expensive. If I had to pick a different option that was maybe slightly cheaper, Mr. Levi Morgan shoots these is the Swacker, especially for whitetail. But this right here is not some place where you're trying to get a cheap broadhead off of Amazon. At the end of the day, this could be the reason that you have a successful hunt or you have a story about what could have been. You can get away with buying a used rifle. You do not have to break the bank when it comes to a rifle. Even if you get a hand-me-down, it's okay. There's plenty of calibers out there 
that are plenty powerful enough to hunt a deer. You'll hear people talk about, oh, I'm 308, oh no, the 6'5", oh no, 243, oh, 270 Winchester. Chances are the caliber that you have is going to be plenty. What matters more than the caliber is the shot placement. Rifles can get expensive though. You could spend a lot of money here or you could spend not as much. My budget option, which I don't see right here, they probably, they have it over there on the wall, would be the Ruger American. And you can go with the original $400 for the gun with no optic on it at all. They do sell some combos, depending on how far you plan on shooting. Under 150 yards, those stock, Scopes that come with it will do get the job done, especially if you're within 100 yards, more than enough. You could be looking at about $500 for a rifle that shoots extremely accurate. As far as the budget ones, I would definitely go Ruger American. I'm team Ruger American. If you got a little bit more room in your budget, get the Gen 2 and buy a little bit nicer of a scope. There's a million different scopes. For the most part, you get what you pay for. If you're looking for a super budget entry level, I would recommend the Vortex Crossfire. It's about $220. You're willing to spend a little bit more, still want to be under that probably like $800 range. I think the Diamondback, which comes in at under $500, is the way to go. As you increase magnification, the price will go up, but if you're just whitetail hunting, chances are your shot's gonna be within 100 yards. Just like how you need arrows for a bow, you need ammo for your rifle. You cannot use any ammo on animals. They make specific hunting rounds that are designed to mushroom and cause more damage. If you're shooting an FMJ round, it's just gonna go through the animal and you may not find whatever you were hunting. It's super easy to figure it out. Very obvious that these are made for whitetail hunting. Super easy. Play around with whatever gun you do have. Shoot a couple different brands of ammo, different weights, and figure out what round your gun shoots the best. Make sure you have a good quality round that your gun likes. We cover the firearms. Now we're gonna get into some of the gear. You need some footwear. You need some boots. Depending on where you are, if you are up north, get a good pair of insulated boots. There's nothing worse than sitting in the tree stand or sitting in the blind and your toes are frozen solid. Here in Texas, I can get away with a lightweight boot like these Under Armors. These are actually the ones that I have, but I do have a pair of insulated boots for those colder hunting days. These boots here are 400 gram insulation. You have your non-insulated, and then you go all the way up to a thousand. You are in like Wisconsin or New York hunting in the winter. You are gonna want a boot with a lot of insulation. But if you're gonna be walking around and hunting, your feet are gonna be sweating so bad. So it's very important to tailor your gear towards your hunting. I have two pairs of boots. I have a lightweight boot if I'm walking around or for the warmer months, and then I have my, I don't wanna freeze my ass off boot. A good pair of wool socks. Get the wool socks, it'll help with not getting blisters or anything like that. It doesn't really matter, just make sure that it's a wool sock. Let's talk camo. You got your pants, your jackets, whatever. I'm not gonna keep repeating myself. Obviously, if you are hunting somewhere that is a lot colder, have a layer system. That way, when it gets warmer, you can take layers off or you can add layers on. But you do not have to break the bank. You don't have to get Kuyu, Sidka, and spend a ton of money if you're just trying to get into it. You also don't need camo pants. You can get away with earthy tone colors. Your greens, your browns, your cream. Another Another thing, which you guys are seeing a common theme is kind of getting stuff tailored to where you're hunting, right? If I'm gonna be hunting out in the desert, I'm not gonna be wearing all these greens, right? You want patterns that will blend in with the environment that you're hunting. I would say is to avoid hunting patterns like this because what ends up happening with the old fashioned camo patterns like this is you just look like a silhouette of sticks and branches and leaves. You want patterns like this that kind of blend in and will fool the eye from the distance. That's the end of the day what the camouflage is for is so that you go undetected and have a successful hunt. Pro tip, if you are hunting in the cold, get you some of these. You will regret not having them. It is way colder in life when you're just sitting there doing nothing versus if you're walking around. So if you're sitting in a blind or in a tree stand for five hours and it's 20 degrees, it's gonna feel like it's negative 20 degrees. Get you a solid pair of gloves, a solid hat. I would recommend finding a brand that you like the fit of and kind of sticking with them. A lot of these brands have systems and layering systems and they obviously you want the pattern to match. You don't want to stick out. You're looking one way up here and the bottom half of you looks like something else. If you have the money to spend, you will notice the longevity of the more expensive stuff. Your First Light, your Kuyu, your Sidka. You could go, I could go spend thousand dollars just trying to get a fit going on. You don't need to spend that much. Bass Pro always has sales when I started. I just walked around here, got some lightweight stuff because I'm here in Texas. It served me good, it'll serve you good. You don't need to break the bank on all your clothes and stuff. Some of this stuff is better moisture wicking and does kind of help trap your scent, but at the end of the day, play the wind. The equipment that you're gonna need is a hunting bag. You could use an old backpack, 
but I'd recommend getting something that's a little bit more durable. You're gonna be dragging this through the woods and all that stuff. You probably don't need a frame pack if you're whitetail hunting. You're not gonna have a crazy pack out or anything like that. Any of these options would work. You could go with something smaller like this. Now, there is some other gear items that you will have to fit in here, but you could fit what you needed in here. I always think it's better to have more space and not need it than you have a little bag like this, which is 30 bucks, and now you run out of space. Lean towards getting a bigger backpack, but you're gonna need a place to put all your gear. So I have two hunting packs. I have a backpack that's like this. It's just camo. It's small, about the same size. I got it for free. This one is 35 bucks. You could get away with that. White tail hunting, this will have what you need for the most part. I also have a big frame pack, which is like five times the size of this and is super expensive, but that is for a different style of hunting. We're just talking, just getting into it. You don't need a big frame, $500 pack with 6,000 cubic inches. Now we covered everything that you're gonna wear and what you're gonna use to actually do the hunting. Now, a safety thing that I would highly recommend if you are in a tree stand is getting some sort of safety harness. Any of these would do the job. The last thing you want is to be calling your significant other or somebody that you fell out of tree stand. Especially if you're hunting by yourself, it's very dangerous. There's no one out there. Not everybody wears one. And if I'm being 100% honest, I haven't been wearing one. But there's a lot of times where I'm up in the tree stand, I'm like shitting my pants. I'm like, this is so sketch, especially when you first set them up. But would definitely recommend some sort of safety harness if you're hunting up in a tree. Or if you're hunting saddle, you definitely need one. Ambush by Muddy is a great option. It's $90. At the end of the day, we're talking about saving your life. There shouldn't really be a price tag. You shouldn't be worried about, oh, this is 20 more dollars or 30 more dollars. Your life is on the line. So get a good quality harness that you can trust. Let's talk optics or specifically binoculars. Are they needed? I'm gonna say no. If you're just white to hunting, chances are you probably can get away with not having binoculars. Now, depending on your setup, they are very nice to have. They'll allow you to see the animal probably far before it gets in range that you would be able to safely take a shot. You don't need to break the bank here. I would get a 10 by 42 and go with the Vortex Crossfire. They're like 200 bucks. I believe they come with a bino harness too, which is really nice. A chest mount, so you got your binos right here. Now for all my archery guys, you need to have a range finder. Not be hunting archery if you do not have a range finder. If you don't know how far you're shooting, you're not gonna be able to shoot it very well. A range finder would also be helpful if you are rifle hunting. Uh, especially if you're taking a longer shot, you can be confident in your bullet drop and whatnot, but you need to have one of these. I have the Crossfire HD, it's a $200 range finder. You will use this thing nonstop. This is something I think is worth investing in and spending the $200 versus trying to find a cheaper option like this one that's 120. I don't know how reliable those are. If that fails you while hunting, you're done hunting. You're gonna need a skinning knife. After you have a successful hunt, you need to be able to field dress the animal after you've had a successful hunt. I would recommend, don't buy a super expensive fixed blade or anything like that. I use these, I know lots of people that use these, is get one of these knives here, Outdoor Edge, this is a great one for 26 bucks. You do not want a giant knife. You want something small that fits in your hand and it has the replacement blade. So as soon as that goes dull, you just swap it out. It takes two seconds. Especially if you plan on doing any pig hunting, their hide is super thick, their hair is super coarse. It'll dull a blade really, really fast. And if you get a fixed blade, now you have to learn something else because you gotta learn how to sharpen that thing. I'd recommend any of these replacement blade knives are great. All of them are razor, razor sharp. One that is on the smaller side, you do not want a super long blade as you're working through the animal and, and skinning it out. When you're traveling, it's very nice to have peace of mind that your firearm or your bow is nice and safe. I'd recommend buying a case. Now, if you want to spend a lot more money, these are only like 50 bucks. You can go with one of these, one of these hard cases, especially if you plan on traveling. That's where these are super nice. I just came back from Oregon with Cam doing the lift front shoot. I traveled with my bow in a case, had no issues at all, but these are very expensive. You can spend a lot of money on these. One of these for 50, 60 bucks will do you plenty fine. These next two, I believe are must. A headlamp and then a flashlight. Chances are you're gonna be hunting either really early in the morning or in the evening. If you shoot something in the evening, you're probably not gonna go get it to dark. You need to be able to see around. A headlamp is one of the best investments that you can make. I have a battery operator one, so it's not the greatest, but it gets the job done. It's similar to this $30 one from Cabela's. You could spend a lot more money and maybe get one that's rechargeable, 
at the end of the day, you want something with a lot of lumens that's gonna really light up your way as you're navigating through the woods at night. So alongside that, I would get a really powerful hand flashlight, especially with tracking blood. Avoid getting a green or red light because you're not gonna be able to see the blood very well, but get a nice bright flashlight. That way when you are tracking your blood trail or going through the woods, not only do you have light up here, but you also have your hand to look around. This is the last item on the list that I feel is an absolute necessity that you need, is a cooler. You need to be able to take care of the meat after you finish your hunt. If you don't have a cooler, your meat is gonna go bad. And now you're wasting the animals, that's not why we hunt. You don't have to spend $350 and get a Yeti. I also would recommend getting a cooler that's for hunting because you don't wanna be putting your dead deer in the same cooler that your burgers for 4th of July were going in. For talking whitetail hunting, if you're quartering it out, you could probably get away with something around that 70 quart range. I recommend getting something bigger. Maybe if you're on a little bit lazy, you can fit more into it. I fit my stag, which is significantly bigger than a deer, like three times the size of a deer, in a 110 quart cooler. So you can get away with one of these smaller coolers, but it is a absolute must. You need to have a cooler. I would probably go with this 90 quart. It's a little bit bigger. Yes, it's on the pricey side, it's $115, but it's got wheels. When you fill that cooler up with meat, it's gonna be heavy. And if you have one that you have to carry like this, especially if you go with a cheaper option cooler, I've seen the handles break. You don't want to have any issues. So I would recommend buying something along the lines of this, a little bit bigger and that has wheels, just so getting around that meat is a lot easier. Now we're gonna talk about some bonuses. These are things that I don't think you need in order to go out and go hunting, but they are very nice to have. Tree stands and blinds. Depending on where you're hunting, you might be able to set up a tree stand. Opting for a bigger tree stand, like these double wires are so much more comfortable. You also have the self climbers and some of the ones that you put up on ghost sticks. They're a little bit more difficult to put up, one of these, you build it in the wood, you flip it up, you strap it down to the tree, and you're ready to go. But you don't need to hunt out of a tree stand or a blind. Although if you're whitetail hunting, there's probably a 95% chance that that's what you're gonna be hunting out of. But you could go super budget and try to make a ground blind. Buy a tree stand, especially if you're hunting public land, you may not wanna leave it up there, you might have to chain it to the tree. You could also go with a ground blind. They just pop up, they're super convenient. We'll go look at those in a second. You also have the option to go a brush blind if you're not trying to spend a ton of money, but it's gonna take a lot of work and it's not gonna last. But a ground blind, a good one, is probably gonna run you two to $300. That one right there is 130. Advantage of having a ground blind is you could move around more without being seen. You could also have two people in there. So if you're hunting with your kid or you're hunting with somebody else, you could have two people in there. I'd recommend getting a bigger one. It's a lot better to have more room, once again. Another upside is you are out of the weather. So the wind is not gonna cut through the blind and the weather, the rain or the snow is not gonna cut through the blind. So those are also advantages. Your scent trail is going to be stronger being on the ground than if you were up. There's a good chance that it'll get pushed over the animals or past where you're hunting. You can't go wrong with a ground blind. I'd recommend if you're gonna go this route, have it in a place that's already kind of covered and leave it there. You want the animals to get used to that. Yes, it's camo, it's not invisible. A cellular trail camera. This is a really good way to spend more time in the woods without spending more time in the woods. These hook up, yeah, get, take a SIM card. I can check the camera at my properties right now here in Bass Pro anytime, anywhere and see the activity of the animal. You can pattern them you can be a lot more efficient. I know not everybody has every day they can go hunting or they may only get a couple weekends out of the year. So by having a trail camera, you can really dial into those animals' habits and patterns so that you're spending your time where the animals are or where the animals are going. Another good thing to have if you're hunting in the rut for whitetail is some sort of track to innocent, whether you're gonna have a grunt or you're gonna have the antlers rattling and making noise. And right next to here is another thing that I highly recommend is having game cleaning gloves. You're not less manly if you're using gloves. It's just gonna make the cleanup process that much easier. Especially, you don't want your guts all over your car. These gloves go all the way up your forearm. They also have the other latex gloves. These are a great investment and make for a really easy cleanup time when skinning an animal. All my gun hunters out there is getting a solid pair of earplugs. I would recommend getting some. These are cheap, these are six bucks that can hang from your neck. And when that opportunity does come, cause you don't wanna be sitting in the woods with earplugs on. But they're right here, so you can go and put them in before you make your shot. Yes, one shot is not gonna blow your eardrums, but if you plan on hunting for a while, having more PPE 
is just going to be better in the long run. I'd recommend some sort of bipod, tripod system that you can shoot off of. Shooting sticks is what they're called. If it's in the budget, the Primos trigger sticks, you can't beat them. A little squeeze of the trigger, it drops down. Now you're ready to take a steady shot. This is just some powder. I honestly don't even know what kind of powder this is. But you give it a little squeeze, it puts the white powder in the air and you can see the wind direction. Obviously, you can sit there and feel where the wind is or drop some grass, but these for four bucks are super nice to have. This is an essential if you do decide that you're hunting out of a blind, is you need something to sit on. Kneeling on the ground is going to be awful. You have cheap options like this. This is probably 10 bucks. Don't do this. Your butt is gonna be numb after two hours. This is a place where if you can afford it, it does pay to have a bit nicer of a chair. Something like this that swivels, it's not gonna make a bunch of noise, super comfortable. But even paying a little bit more and getting a full size chair, or if you have, you know, chairs already, these are super nice. The hunting ones tend to not have anything on the arms, especially if you're bow hunting, so you don't have anything in the way when you're drawing. But get a good chair for the blind so you're comfortable, or get a foam pad that goes on top. I know they sell them, I don't see any here, but a lot of the stores have that. I'd recommend a paracord with a carabiner. It's useful for plenty of things. You could use that to drag an animal out, but when you climb up in the tree stand, you have a way of getting your stuff up. So rather than trying to climb with one hand and your bow or your rifle and this is all going over the place, you hook up the paracord to your bow or to your rifle, have the string on you, you climb up to the top, and then you pull your bow or your rifle up and you attach that to your tree stand and leave that there for any time that you're coming to hunt. That is something that is very simple, but it makes such a difference. <laughs> can think of that's very nice to have while you're out hunting. It's a good hunting camp. I don't know, it just kind of makes, it, you just have to do it. My list of the essentials that you will need and some bonus items as well. For any of my guys who are a little bit more experienced with hunting, if there's anything I left out, drop it down below in the comments. At the end of the day, we are all on the same team. There's a lot more non-hunters than there are hunters. There's too much of hunter versus hunter going on. We end up being our biggest enemy. We're at the end of the day, we're losing hunting land because we have people that are non-hunters voting on stuff, so we need to stay together. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're watching this, you're getting into hunting, it's gonna be a money hole. It just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. You want the next best thing. You wanna upgrade here, you wanna upgrade here, but it's not a hobby, it's a lifestyle. There's nothing like putting food on the table that you knew where it came from, you know everything about it, and you're the reason that it's on the table. That is a wrap on my list of what you need to get into hunting no matter where you are at. If you guys want anything more in depth, gun-wise, archery-wise, or anything, or anything I brushed over quickly that you guys would like some more information, drop it down below and I have no problem, I'll make another video for you guys. At the end of the day, I want all you guys to be out there hunting. I want more hunters. I don't want this lifestyle that I've fallen in love with to be forgotten. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video because I searched for one of these videos when I first started out and there wasn't anything that laid it out quite like we did. So if you did enjoy it, drop a comment, hit the like button, hit subscribe. It costs you guys nothing, means the world to me. And as always, it's been real, it's been trail. It's your boy Jay Lane and go chase your motherfucking dreams.